Birding by sounds, more commonly known as birding by ear, is very helpful and is what many birders use every time they go out into the field. However, it is generally the most difficult to learn. Birds have songs, calls, flight calls, chip notes, and display calls or sounds. Not only do you want to memorize all of them so that when you hear it in the field you can identify it, you also have to learn the subtle differences in the calls between similar species. Songs Songbirds are the main birds that sing. Birds often sing as winter is ending and spring is approaching. Birds mainly sing to mark their territory and attract mates. One could say it's their way of maintaining their own space and family so other birds don't steal their livelihood away. People have often thought that only the males sing, but a 2016 study proves that wrong. The study found in a sample of more than 1,000 songbird species from around the world, 64% had females that sing. Female singing is better known in the tropics, but even in North America, nearly 150 songbird species have females that sing. During courtship, male and female northern cardinals sing together and will often match songs possibly helping reinforce the pair bond or as a warning to others that the territory is already claimed by both a male and a female. Calls Calls are used year-round. They are one of the more challenging sounds to learn because birds may have more than one call. Birds, such as mockingbirds, known to mimic multiple birds, only make this more challenging. Calls are also used for danger alarms. With many species, the alarm call is a variation of a normal call. For example, the black-capped chickadee regularly says chickadee D, but when a northern pygmy owl is in the vicinity, the number of Ds is increased and the frequency of the call becomes almost non-stop. Black-capped chickadees also have a higher-pitched alarm call used for hawks and sometimes strikes. This call is accompanied by the birds freezing in place and only using their eyes to see if the danger is past. Flight calls. These are calls used in flight, hence the name. If you see a bird flying at a distance and silhouetted against the sky, you can use the call, providing it calls, to identify the bird more easily. Many species use their regular calls, but some have specific calls for flight. Chip notes. Chip notes are common among sparrow and warbler species, but those aren't the only species with chip notes. Birds such as northern cardinals also have chip notes. They are single notes and usually high pitched, but can also sound metallic. Display calls and sounds. Display calls and sounds are used during breeding season, and many birds have unique sounds to accompany their display. Perhaps in North America, the most well-known is the rough grouse. This bird has a display using its wings, commonly called drumming, which is audible to the human ear up to distances of one-eighth to one-quarter of a mile or more. Many hummingbirds also have specific display sounds. Here's an example of a male black-chinned hummingbird. Ways to help learn the songs and calls. While memorizing the sounds can be difficult, here are some ways to make that process easier. Recording the songs and calls while you're out in the field. Recording helps tremendously because when you're surrounded by many birds, you often don't want to miss one bird while trying to identify another, and by recording, you can review the sound after you finish birding. This enables you to not only compare and attempt identification later by yourself by listening to the sounds of different species, but it also gives you something you can send to a bird expert if you can't identify it. It also helps contribute to scientific research relating to bird calls if you submit it with your checklist to eBird. Spectrograms If you record the songs and calls of birds while out in the field, you can use spectrograms for aiding in identification. These allow you to visualize the sounds. 
This is extremely helpful for identifying similar species, and is sometimes the only way you can tell them apart. While there are many things to learn about spectrograms, we'll just mention the basics. There are seven basic tones for bird sound recordings on spectrograms. Whistled, hooting, clicking, buzzy, nasal, noisy, and polyphonic. Here are some recordings and spectrograms of birds doing these different sounds. There are four basic song patterns, phrase, series, warble, and trill. Phrases are groups of unique notes that are slow enough to count. Series are groups of repeated notes that are also slow enough to count. Warbles are groups of unique notes that are too fast to count, and trills are groups of repeated notes that are too fast to count. While too fast to count is somewhat subjective, generally it means any speed over about eight notes per second. Here are bird songs illustrating these four patterns. Finally, it is helpful to notice differing speed. If the sound is accelerating, the spaces between separate notes decrease in size, and if the sound is decelerating, the spaces increase in size. Here are a couple examples. <laughs> Mnemonic Devices Mnemonic devices are phrases associated with different bird songs or calls. Different birders may have different phrases for the same species, but it's all about what works for you. For example, the warbling vireo's message to its insect prey is, I'll see you and I'll seize you and I'll squeeze you till you squirt. The barred owl asks, Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? And the yellow warbler says, sweet, 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 I'm so sweet. Learning the difference between similar species calls is challenging, but it's rewarding to walk outside and be able to recognize all the different birds that are singing. <laughs>